All right, good Wednesday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. All right, Jim, let's begin with the Federal Reserve. Jeffrey Gunlack uh, endorsing Neil Kashkari. Look, I, Gunlock is an outlier. I happen to like him very much. He's done some high quality bomb work. I'm not as crazy about his stock work. He knows that. Uh, it's certainly no ad hominem attack on him, but I would say that that Kashkari is not as good a bet as uh, Warsh, uh, or, you know, or my friend Jay Powell. Uh, Doug Castle a very good piece today about talking about who is likely to get in. He's talking about Warsh. I had wanted Gary Cohn because I don't want the Fed to bleed off its bonds. I want him to sell its bonds because I have always regarded that one of the big dangers in this system is the Fed's large bond holding. I want it to be gotten off the balance sheet. I'm very conservative about debt. The Fed has too much of it. All right, let's move on to Pepsi, the uh, beverage company saying that the declines in the beverage business are temporary, not structural. Right, now the stock is reacting initially to the idea that yes, they, were, they made mistakes. One of the things I love about PepsiCo is that they say, in the first paragraph, they made mistakes and they're gonna course correct. Uh, betting against Inzer Nui after her stock's been down 11, 12 points has been not right. She's the CEO, remember 50 times of her stock, of her cash compensation is in stock, so she's clearly working for value creation. I have, this is the only stock in that whole consumer sector that we own for Action Alerts, and we told club members last week, beware this was going to happen, we're selling. Uh, if the stock gets down to 105, 103, 102, we'll issue another bulletin. We have, by the way, a very important bulletin coming out about waste management that I really want everyone to read. But we were on this for PepsiCo, for club members, and it's the kind of value that you get if you are a member of the club. It is the kind of value. And Jim, yesterday you said PepsiCo is the sort of best house in a bad neighborhood. Right, and I said people should trim it, and you got a really good price yesterday, and I gave that to club members first, because that's what ActionAlertsPlus.com Club is about. It is. All right, Jim, uh, Netflix's price target was raised by UBS. Yeah, what now this you... again is a survey about what's going on with Netflix. The original programming is resonating around the world, including uh, particularly Narcos 3. I'm pretty close to Netflix. I believe in a lot of these stories that are coming out. My favorite uh, kinds of companies that have these streams are, are Amazon, Netflix, and Spotify. And Ted Sarandos telling Andrew R. Sorkin yesterday that Netflix could spend $7 billion on content next year. Right, he year. said that last time, and I think it's absolutely a possibility. Now remember, they say that the sign of success is an is enormous negative cash flow. To some degree, people felt that Reed was uh, on that conference call was given to hyperbole. I like Reed so much, you know what, I've had to think, you know what, and to some degree, maybe he's right. All right, and Ford uh, looking to cut $14 billion well, in costs. it's cost. incredible. They've been cutting costs now forever, and where's it got the stock? Uh, GM is ahead. Uh, Tesla, uh, I don't, you need to ask me this about Tesla because I'm now going to give you the story, all yes. right? Uh, Tesla, there's a research note out this morning uh, from the Mura Instant at saying a $500 target. They're well ahead of everybody, and that would include GM. I say it's not a zero-sum game. GM still has a very low valuation. The airlines, the autos have the lowest valuation. I don't want to buy Ford. I want to buy GM. And I, I Tesla's a cold stock. I'm never saying anybody should buy it or sell it. And in that Tesla note, it said that the buyers are economically irrational. Yeah, I thought that was funny. I mean, it's true. My daughter just said, Dad, I need a Tesla. And she ended up buying a more expensive car and candidly used her own money, which I but, uh, took down some debt. She was very hardworking. She had a job. And uh, I, I was very encouraged by that. Well, congrats to her. That's great. Yeah. Meanwhile, a Mylan receiving approval for that MS treatment. You know, this $3.5 billion drug, Copaxone, it's mo one of the most amazing drugs. It is the drug that everyone presumed Teva would lose exclusivity to. So this Teva had gone down well in advance of that. So it's not like that Teva's stock didn't forecast this. However, if those who want to speculate on Teva, remember that Allergan owns 10%. Allergan is an ActionAlertsPlus.com name, a disappointing one. I talk about the good ones, talk about the bad ones. It's been a disappointing one, but they do own 10% of Teva as part of a transaction that was so brilliant, where Teva bought their generics uh, is Te Teva's a, you know, Mylan, this is worth probably 40 bucks. You can go up to 40 on Mylan. Uh, Teva, if, if uh, you could buy some, because everybody knows it, after tomorrow when the downgrades will occur for the remaining analysts, and then you wait to see what Brent Saunder does with Allergan uh, and his 10% stake. Well, and as you write in Real Money, some of these analyst notes, I mean, these the, the levels they're giving may not exactly act up in the, in the weeks following it. Uh, is, what, the sells? Yeah, basically that they'll give a sell rating and the stock creeps back higher a few weeks well, later. Right, I mean, typically what happens is on day three of a new quarter, people say, 
wait a second. Uh, you know, I, I had 3M that was downgraded by a very good analyst. Steve Tu said JP Morgan stocks up quick six. Maybe that should go. We had a good example of that be United Technologies. The stock fell to 109 off the Rockwell Collins. I pushed it very hard here, saying I thought it should go right back up. It's right back up. Do you reevaluate that? Do you reevaluate J and J, which is coming back after Jamie Rubin hit it so hard? I would point out and say, look. Stick with the fundamentals. I think 3M is going to have a good quarter. I think J&J is going to be fine. I think United Technology is probably a couple points too high. Don't forget, too high. Remember, Honeywell is going to be doing a strategic review. Honeywell is more favored, but if Honeywell does not spin off the aerospace, there'll be people who are disappointed. Honeywell could come down. So just be aware that some of the big cap stocks that are screaming are in a, what I don't want to use the word precarious, but are at levels where typically people have said, you know what, maybe I ought to take some off the table. Again, the oils, if we get an oil number 1030, which indicates a build in the, in, in the, uh, in the inventories, I think people take profits in that group too. And Jim, what did you make of Shopify's link up with Instagram? No, Shopify was, is um, a piece put out by Andrew Leff about uh, why it's worth uh, going, that it will probably go to 60, okay. and that Andrew left, if you go to at Citron on Twitter, you can see a seven minute video about why he says that Shopify uh, is a multi-level medium potential fraud that will be investigated. I have felt that Shopify stock, we compared it to Etsy on Mad Money, and it, we thought it was too high, but it was not for these revelations uh, that I think uh, that left is brought to light. The stock is up a great deal, so I think people should go to the, uh, Twitter at, at Citron, and then if you can get his report later in the day, I'm sure it's going to be talked about. It seems like a very rigorous report. Remember, left wrong on Chem, uh, on, uh, on Chemture, right on Valiant, uh, early on Wayfair, uh, Voxel Jet, correct on it, but most importantly, provocative, honest and tough. All right, Jim, let's end with earnings to watch. We have Costco reporting on Thursday. Well, Costco is historically, after they report a fantastic number, then going down. Uh, and that a lot of this because of Amazon. Uh, and I think that Amazon uh, Whole Foods, the tie up hasn't been impacted yet. If Costco addresses it, which they traditionally have not, then I think uh, maybe it's clear sailing, but Costco has moved up a great deal. Home Depot moved up a great deal. Again, those are positions that in, in, an radical, uh, in a more uh, logical extension of my real money piece today, uh, you could definitely say, well, wait a second, Costco, which is a great company and should go higher, maybe profit taking will ensue, not unlike Home Depot. There could be profit taking. Now let me go on a couple of discrete issues. Mm. Puerto Rican municipal bonds, there's GOs and there's revenues. The president's comments seem to indicate that they're going to wipe this out. Goldman has nothing to do with it, by the way. I'm not just saying because I'm alumnus of Goldman. The revenue bonds I do think could be wiped out, but that has been well into those bonds. Uh, I bought some, I have a municipal bond portfolio, I can't own stocks. I have some Puerto Rican GOs. I, you know, at 30, I don't trade. And, and, and at 30, maybe they're a buy, maybe not. I don't like the Puerto Rican situation. Now you have the president against it, which is uh, makes a, a pretty severe situation, not one that I necessarily want to get involved in. A couple other things to be thinking about. Uh, David brought up a very good report, a report about Kraft Times. What can they do? And whether that stock is going to go lower. Goldman Sachs, I have to agree. The, uh, with PepsiCo, I like PepsiCo in that group. I like Constellation Brands ahead of their quarter. That stock sometimes sells off after a good quarter. Might be a good opportunity to buy it after it sells off. Uh, I do think that uh, there was a downgrade of Accenture that I saw. I want to take the other side of that. Once again, on Action Alerts, club members, please check your bulletins this morning. We're going to be issuing a few of them. I see technology stocks going down. That's more of the typical thing that I talked about in the real money piece. People didn't like Intel at 35. They suddenly like it at 40. The larger thesis in the real money piece is about how index funds buy ETF funds buy, hedge funds sell, unless it's a definitive story about an actual weakness. Talk about the Shopify piece. Again, go to at, at Citron, and I'm not working for him. As I pointed out, once again, I make that. That's a severe charge for those who are going to make it. I did, I did a piece about why I thought he was early or perhaps wrong on Wayfair. I did not like his Kim Moore's, not Kim Chur, I'm sorry. I did not like his Kim Moore's piece because of the spinoff was done at a very good valuation. I did like his Valiant. Everybody can be wrong. 
but the work on Shopify is, if you click on the links, seems rigorous to me. So everybody can be wrong, I can be wrong, left can be wrong, but I do always want to point out to you why stocks are moving. Those are important lessons. And Jim, before we end, you have Bill Ackman on tonight. Yes, and Bill, you know, this is about automatic data and what can be done with automatic data and what he says. Uh, I might sneak in a question about Herbalife, might speak in, speak in a question about Spotify. Uh, it might speak, uh, sneak in a question about Chipotle if I have it. I know Bill really wants to address the issues of automatic data, and of course that's what we're going to do. Automatic data has been a stock that I, uh, I, I've i liked, but Paychex has been the one that I've liked the most. Uh, City came out yesterday or this morning and reiterated its sell on the stock of City. I reiterate my buy in the face of City's sell on City. So far, on, on Paychex, so far I'm right and he's wrong, but I remember what I said about Andrew Left. Could Shopify be far more legitimate than Left says? Absolutely. But I think what matters is Shopify is an expensive stock. We said we like we preferred Etsy to Shopify. Uh, so I think you should be as informed as possible. A lot of these videos, what we do in Action Alerts is to inform you as an investor, and you need to know that. All right, it's all good advice. Jim Kramer, we appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you so much. For more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, please head to actionalertsplus.com.